actually, it yeah, starts strategy um, came at a wonderful time actually, um, as Babs become more and more of a, a knowledge economy. The HRD strategy and also encompassing the incubator program specifically really is a win-win situation. It's a win-win um, in terms of the economy because it's going to generate new jobs, it's going to build the capacity among our young people within our workforce holistically so that they can fill gaps that would, would have previously been filled by persons externally. Um, in addition to that, it's going to be beneficial socially because you're having vulnerable groups that would be previously disadvantaged, such as youth, that are being incorporated within this program. Um, the, 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 the dis disparity among women, that would also be addressed within the program. Parents and teachers and heads of households should all be interested in this because it's going to have to be the way of, of the future for economic development in Barbados. And one of the things we want to do is also look at how the agricultural sector fits into the whole green economy. So how, making sure that we train our farmers on alternative energy and all the other players in the agricultural sector and also making sure we strengthen the information systems available. The goal of the knowledge management system is to make the government more efficient in many ways. So it will be able to deliver services and, and to citizens and to businesses more efficiently. The Human Resource Development Strategy of the Ministry of Labour, Social Security and Human Resource Development, funded by the European Union, is a carefully devised plan of action that will make the people of Barbados more able to achieve three national goals, to be globally competitive, have diverse economic growth in different sectors, and to reduce poverty. The aim of the strategy is to have a holistic approach to human resource development. It is recognized that one of Barbados' key resources is human capital. In the development phase of the strategy, extensive consultations were held with representatives from the private and public sectors, including educators and public servants. Strategic linkages between stakeholders were identified and five broad pillars of knowledge were defined. Pillar one focuses on the enabling environment it focuses specifically on institutional strengthening and capacity building. The development of our human capital is particularly important. And a lot of that happens um, through a number of agencies. Now, within the public sector, we have agencies responsible for human resource management and human resource development. And those agencies, Ministry of the Civil Service, Personnel Administration Division, and the Training Administration Division, were identified as priority institutions to be part of Pillar 1 and to undergo assessments with the hope of strengthening these organizations so that they can more effectively help in managing the human resources in the public sector. In addition, there are other institutions in the public sector who we have um, included because they also have a role to play in, term, in terms of developing skills and developing um, competencies for the private sector, and I speak now to institutions like the Barbados Vocational Training Board, the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic and the TVET Council, which is a regulator for the technical and vocational education training program in Barbados. So these institutions have a major role to play. Pillar 2 involves the development of a national vocational qualifications framework that is recognized internationally. When you put the qualifications on the qualifications framework through the national qualifications register, you will know the equivalency of the TVET qualifications, and you will know what you are worth. The people at the university would understand your worth and know what to do with you, etc. A good August well for pay, equivalency of qualification, credits, and, and further study. So that is going to sort that out. And also, you will know where to put your qualifications on the qualifications order of the government. Both government and private sector got the qualifications. So when you advertise now a CVQ, you don't see CVQs being advertised for jobs. That is going to happen. You will know you have this, that, that, or you got a CVQ equivalent or whatever, whatever. So people understand the TVET qualifications more and know what people can do. Pillar 3 speaks to demand-driven education, acknowledging that economic growth cannot happen without the competencies and the knowledge of the people. The strategy is designed to ensure that going forward, Education is driven by the demands of the labor market. Pillar 3 also looks at strengthening the labor market information system because we want to be able to produce 
very accurate information which tertiary education providers can then use to determine their programs going forward. For too long, the education system in Barbados was supply driven. It was not focused on responding to the needs of the labor market. Pillar 4 focuses on the development of a knowledge management system for Barbados and also looks at how the public and private sectors can be trained in knowledge management. The HR strategy um, came at a wonderful time, actually, um, as Babs become more and more of a, a knowledge economy. Not just Babs as a world becomes more of a knowledge economy. We have to look at the skills, not just of all the employees, but also the citizens as, as well. Right? And this will afford opportunity now for citizens and also um, public officers right, to be trained in the new knowledge management concepts, right? As I mentioned before, we are trying to um, offer uh, more than one channels for services, and one of these services will be online services, right? So the citizens will have to get accustomed now to actually not just going to the counter, but getting online. As, as the cliche would say, moving from in-line to online. Okay, knowledge management is the process on how you can identify knowledge where it resides, so it can be in people's head, how you can capture it, and how you can classify it, store it, and make it available to those who need it. Knowledge consists of two aspects, tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is that knowledge that is hard to articulate, hard to ex explain. It involves know-how, know-why, and involves personal knowledge and experience, and therefore it's difficult to articulate to people. Um, on the other hand, explicit knowledge is knowledge that is easily seen and thought to be important. Um, explicit knowledge involves things like policies, procedures, recipes, um, descriptions, labels, etc. things that are pretty and easy to be seen, everybody knows about it. On the strengths, I think the level of uh, the workforce, I mean the quality and, and, and the education of the public service is quite good. Uh, the size is an advantage here because we could manage uh, a whole management, knowledge management system for the whole country uh, relatively easy because it's not a big size, let's say, uh, government. Um, I think there is a quite committed uh, uh, um, on, on, on decision-making levels in some of the key ministries here. There seems to be an understanding now about what this can bring to the country and how it can improve the way government works overall. So, uh, uh, having that vision and having that understanding is key because that, that's what will drive the change. If you think of an um, a iceberg in the sea, the part of the iceberg you can see at the top, that's explicit knowledge. And the part you cannot see, which is the biggest part of the iceberg, is tacit knowledge. And this knowledge management that we're building here needs to focus and get in to that part that you can't see in the iceberg. So this management system then will enable us to um, move from tacit to explicit knowledge. It really needs a big investment. It, it needs to be a, uh, uh, there is a cultural change to be managed. You need to uh, infuse that culture of knowledge sharing and, and collaboration in the public service so it can be successful. Being in context, you know very well that our major resource is people. Since the individual is critical to knowledge management and knowledge creation, we need to ensure that that individual is competent and that we have access to his tacit knowledge experiences. If you look at rationalizing your, the, the, the way the, the public service works and, and, and how the, the, the public officers uh, operate, and, and you're looking at the public sector reform, so re-engineering processes, that's the opportunity where to include, uh, through certain specific uh, actions or measures, uh, ways of managing that cultural change. That could include, for example, uh, in the appraisal systems, uh, include a way of incentivating people to be more uh, oriented towards sharing or collaboration, so that then when, when they will be appraised in their, in, their, in, their, in their jobs at the end of the year, if they have collaborated more or shared more, or be more uh, oriented toward this kind of, uh, uh, you, then they will get more re somehow rewarded or, 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 or better appraised, let's say. Well, records and information management is generally defined as the systematic control of records and information, either owned by an organization or an individual, from their creation to their final disposition. So the operative word there is control. 
So you manage the records throughout every stage of their, what we call the life cycle of the record. There are two main pieces of legislation that need to be enacted and as quickly as possible, and those are the most enabling pieces of legislation for the KMS to be successful. That would be the Freedom of Information Act and also the Data Protection Act. The Freedom of Information Act would, in, would inform us and instruct us as to what records should be um, created for opening to the public or view open viewing to the public. So we will be clear as to what we can open. And the Data Protection Act serves the purpose of uh, safeguarding privacy, the privacy of our citizens. Um, data that relates, personal data within those records that relate to our citizens. Pillar 5 of the Human Resource Development Strategy focuses on innovation, entrepreneurship, research, and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, known as STEM. For Barbados, we're interested, of course, in sustainable economic development for Barbados. We're interested in building new economic pillars based on STEM. And if you look around the world, you see that many other developing countries have embraced science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to drive their economies. And so we should do the same. The creative process is the first one that starts. The imagination is, if you want to go all the way back to the beginning, is where a lot of innovation starts. People have ideas. You can argue where it comes from, but normally we will say it comes from the imagination. And then those ideas have to be put into practice. They've got to be tested. Sometimes you have to do a hypothesis testing. You, you then maybe try to break it down to a prototype. But along the way, you can lump all of that under research. The entrepreneurship, of course, is important because now you've had the idea, you've tested it, it kind of works. You might have built a prototype if you're lucky, but now you have to make a business out of it. And that's where the entrepreneurship comes in. This is what we want in terms of STEM. We want persons who can innovate, who can look around, look at our natural resources and figure out ways that they can create devices that can harness the energies. For example, solar energy, wind energy, that can use these natural resources that can redound to the economic benefit of Barbados. The greatest benefit of the HRD strategy for science and technology is probably the education part in terms of educating the, the stakeholders and the public at large. Uh, because by virtue of the things we're doing, you have these consultations. And it's not just a matter of um, talking about what the problems are, but then you start to realize how you can use um, the, the, the people who are trained and just the steps that you need. With regards to innovation in the university in the country, if there's one thing I have discovered, there's plenty of it in terms of ideas and, and things that people want to do. What is lacking is the environment and the funding. Our specific project looks at the cultural industry sector and how we can reinvigorate the sector basically by doing important research to inform and to add value to the various products that the sector, cultural industry sector, provide. Um, specifically, we'll be looking at the performance arts aspect of the sector. Um, our project really has two components, a local component and an international component. So this local component will look at the research and how this research will add value. But it also will be instructive to how we can move towards the whole component of standards in terms of providing, um, assisting the TVET with developing standards in terms of MVQs for um, specific aspects of the cultural industries. The Human Resource Development Strategy is also encouraging innovations that promote the use of new technologies in agriculture. We develop a consumer guide from within the Barbados Renewable Energy Association uh, on photovoltaics and understanding photovoltaic installations. Uh, we develop within, from the, within the Barbados Renewable Energy Association. And out of that, the Ministry of Labor, uh, through its Human Resource Development Program, decided that they wanted to, to consult with us to provide training in certain segments of the community. Uh, with the financial community, we started with, with that. Then we did one with small and medium-sized enterprises. This is the third one. And for this third one, um, the ministry wanted us to, be, to have agricultural, the agricultural community as part of it. After the workshop this morning, we decided to have a field trip so that you can see solar grow in action. We are happy that we have the, 
Youth Agripreneurship Program out of the Ministry of Agriculture that make up the majority of um, this group here today. I expect to get out of the program is to like really see what the program having, what I have to offer, and how to develop and further my pig business to become one of probably one of the biggest pig farmers in Barbados. What I need most would be like guidance. I want to like guide you through the process how to develop a business and actually some actual funds to actually get there. I applied for the agripreneurship program because it seemed like a good way to learn more about what I wanted to get into, which was which is hydroponics and aqu aquaponics. And it's an opportunity to learn new stuff, see what I can do with it. So I believe that Barbados is now acutely aware that to be globally competitive, modern societies, they need an agile workforce capable of responding to global dynamics of the modern knowledge economy. That's particularly important right now. The support to the human resource development in Barbados um, provided um, us with the opportunity to, to concretize our support to the country, um, helping to put in the capacity, if you like, behind the policies of the past. And that's an important point, because you cannot have a policy without capacity. With total support approximating 50 million euros, the HDR program, the Human Resource Development Program, represents our largest investment in Barbados to date, and it's one of our largest programs in the entire Caribbean region. We see the national qualifications framework as being an important tool in the mobility of the citizens of this country. Citizens will, will now have some level of uh, currency, if you like, to their qualifications, um, especially um, the non-traditional qualifications, let me explain, um, where, uh, for instance, you have been trained in um, uh, cosmetology or in craft. You may not have a certificate. You may not have a paper to show for. But with the uh, uh, national qualifications framework, you will have something. And you will be able to produce a CARICOM skill certificate. And this is important because that means that you'll be able to move in and out of the educational system locally in Barbados. But it also means that regionally, you'll be able to take advantages, uh, advantage of opportunities uh, beyond the country, including uh, those provided by the uh, trade agreement, uh, EPA, that I mentioned earlier. So citizens can therefore be trained locally and at the same time work globally. In the past, we have supported a mix of uh, scholarships, of infrastructure and skills development. Um, two very prominent examples of our support include the Pomarine um, host, um, Hotel and uh, Hospitality Institute and the Barbados Language Center. The Human Resource Development Strategy is for every Barbadian. And what it is, it's a program or essentially a series of programs that will allow for every Barbadian, whether a student, whether a worker in the private sector or public sector, or even unemployed, to be able, first of all, to decide what it is he wants to do, what his passion is, even if he doesn't know.